This is the test that you guys asked for and I am more than happy to oblige. In this video I'm going to test to see if there is a difference in signal strength between this DJI RC2 and this RC N2 controller with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So let's get into it. So what I've decided to do is test to see if there is any difference in signal quality between the two controllers in a ultra high interference area in an urban environment. Yes, you may want to shout at me in the comment section to say I'm not going to be flying very far and wide and it's not really a range test, but by the same token, if I do try and fly far and wide, I'm just going to get a bunch of people shouting at me in the comment section about visual line of sight. So really, I cannot win. So this is the best course of action I can think to put these controllers to the test. So as we begin the test in this urban environment, one of the points you guys wanted me to also test is to see how the drone performs when it's left in its dual band transmission mode. This basically means that it can freely switch on its own accord between 2.4, 5.2 and 5.8 gigahertz frequencies. So if we do get any interference, just to see what the drone will do. Now this first test is using the DJI RC N2 with a mobile phone. You can tell that because it's got a slightly different resolution, it's a little bit more squashed. Okay, um, so as we are flying along in this beautiful uh, area which, which I live, this is called Beverly and very, very picturesque. As we come to the end of this little straight uh, and take a left, you can see the signal is absolutely fine so far. However, what you are going to find is as we fly a little bit further along, we are going to get that little dip in the connection quality. We're going to be getting that red indicator in the top right corner. Okay. Um, and if we quickly flick to the transmission tab, even though um, it could potentially switch because it's in dual band, it has remained on that 5.2 gigahertz frequency. And that's consistent with what I've said previously, uh, that this 5.2 gigahertz frequency, because it's less congested, I would very much doubt the drone will fly on any other frequency frequency other than this one. But of course we did not lose any signal whatsoever okay we have now flown straight through that interference black spot and then what we're going to then do is of course just make our final 10 and return all the way back to the home point. So a pretty successful test there. So the second test is going to be conducted with the DJI RC2 and its external antennas. Flicking open that transmission tab, once again, you can see that this drone and the controller have chosen that 5.2 gigahertz frequency all over again. And we are also going to be conducting this test at the exact same height, because obviously it's important for equal testing at that 45 meters altitude. Now, during my tests, please feel free to check out the compass in the bottom left corner. Providing this dot is showing green, it means I'm efficiently pointing the controller towards the drone at all times, so we are hopefully going to get some equal results. Now, again, same as the first flight, we have performed this first stretch absolutely perfectly fine. So we're going to take this little left turn right now, just the exact same spot as what we did before, because of course it's always uh, important to do the exact same route where possible. And once again, as we are flying forwards, just like we did on the first flight with the DJI RC N2, we're going to get that signal dropout, okay? But once again, flicking open that transmission tab again there is absolutely no change to the frequency with which the drone has chosen it is still sticking with that 5.2 but just like the first flight again we have got no loss of video feed, we've had no loss of control, we have flown all the way straight through that interference, again following the exact same route, okay, and then what we're going to do is then just take this final left turn and the drone's going to continue on its way all the way back to the home point. So those of you that have been part of my channel for a long time know that I generally always give unbiased results as best as I possibly can and I get my kicks out of equal and fair testing. And while yes, of course, here in Europe, we don't have quite the broadcasting power that you do over in the US, which is why you see that we're getting interference and signal dropouts much earlier with which you would expect. The ultimate goal is to keep control of our video feed and our control of our drone at all times 
and of course this has done that there was absolutely zero difference between the two controllers and quite frankly i would not expect them to be so hopefully that answers that query for all of those that was wondering again if you found this video useful please do give it a big thumbs up it tells the youtube algorithm more people just like you might want to watch my content subscribe if you're awesome and until next time thank you very much for watching see you again soon